Hello and welcome to Multifamily Investing Made Simple, the podcast that's all about taking the complexity out of real estate investing so that you can take action today. I am your host, Anthony Vecino of Invictus Capital, joined by the one, the only, looking dapper in his dark, dark navy blue V-neck sweater Kruger. Always V-neck. Always V-neck. For those of you who don't watch this and you just listen to it, you're missing quite the bespoke show we've got going on here. Anthony's about to get on stage in a little bit, and he's rocking. What are we wearing? Well, let's give. It, I do want to give a shout out to these yeah. tailors. These, these are local. These stuff. are these are local guys. They're twin brothers, and they do great custom suits. Their name the, the King Brothers. They do bespoke. bespoke suits, not custom. Because they custom. they actually corrected me on they, that when I was there. They do everything themselves. There's, it's crazy. There's custom, which is kind of like there's a cookie cutter uh, starting point for a suit, and then it gets tailored aggressively. This is from scratch. They put for it all you. together from scratch. Yeah. So it's technically. Technically bespoke. They came across my radar because they did the suit jacket for the mountain from Game of Thrones. And I was like, well, if they oh. can deal with that amount of fabric, they can handle me. I didn't know they did that. That's now impressive. we don't get too gussied up. Um, usually, you, you guys know this. We're black V-neck type t-shirt kind of guys. But today, yeah, like Dan mentioned, I'm going on stage here in a little bit. And this seemed like a really good opportunity to, to share our story of how we met, but then also talk about networking and the power of networking. So two years ago... We met at a conference and <laughs> the story is I walked in and sat at an empty table because that's how I network is I go to a room full of people and then I hide in the corner. And Dan, I guess, is very similar. So he came and found me. We sat next to each other, struck up a relationship. And here we are two years later. Um, it's been a, it's been a wild, crazy ride. Now, this afternoon, we'll go back to this same conference that we met at two years ago. And now, instead of being in the crowd, we're actually on stage, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I guess the bottom line is it's worth it because I'm the exact same way. Super uncomfortable uh, with the whole networking thing. It's it's exhausting and intimidating for me. And I'm the same way as Anthony. I go and find the uh, the least populated area of the room and situate myself there. And that's where he was. And that's how we met. But it's totally worth it. Um, we've said it so many times in this show, but it bears repeating again because it is uh, the foundation of pretty much any business, but especially the business we're in. Mm -hmm. It's all about who you know and who knows you. Yeah, one of the things is about networking events that I've found with these big conferences. And I think conferences, I, I typically like the events where you have to pay to get in the door rather than just going to the free networking events at like the Arby's, right? You get a different caliber of people who are willing to pay and travel for a thing. So I like conferences because it attracts a lot of people from around the country. But one of the really interesting things is you can have, you can learn so much more about your industry really quickly in a short period of time during the networking periods, because you're sitting there having a conversation, maybe you have a beer and like tongues are getting loose and we're starting to talk about like what's happening in this market and that place with this person and that thing and regulations. And you, you can gain insights into how the, the market is moving so much quicker than just what you see on social media or in the media at large, because that's going to be filtered to a large extent. I'm not going to tell you the deep unvarnished truth about all the deep dark secrets I see in the industry right now. I'm not going to put that on blast out in public, but if you get me at a conference and you take me aside like and start having a conversation, you might start to gain some insight into things that you just had no clue about before. Yeah, I think it's that's a good point. You can go a lot deeper uh, with people and have some really good conversations, especially when you go to the happy hour afterwards. I mean, if there's a couple drinks going around, people are going to, you know, start talking about some things that maybe might be a little bit more controversial. I don't know. But I think mm -hmm. the, the main thing I like to tell people about it is it's the most efficient, the most time efficient way Absolutely. to move yourself and your business forward uh, because you can accomplish um, way more in one weekend at a really good networking event than you could in months of just trying to meet people one by one in the normal course of business, right? So it's incredibly efficient. So that was my justification on the first one is um, I actually just got back from um, out of being you know, out of the country. My wife and I were in Italy for uh, two weeks for our anniversary, and we flew in very late the night before this conference, and I was exhausted. But mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I got to go to this because it's going to be worth it. I don't know why. I just know it's going to be a good use of my time, and it was. So. Yeah, it, to make it helpful, to go into networking events with some kind of agenda, uh, not like a hard and fast agenda, but some kind of like goal. I go into them with the goal of meeting just one person because that's an easier, low barrier to entry. I have anxiety around large events. It's really interesting. I'm comfortable in front of a large group of people. 
But one on one, it's very, very difficult. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. So I set small goals of just go in there and make one relationship and try and make it matter. And even if you're a passive investor, these conferences can still be very, very valuable because I was talking actually yesterday because this is a two day event. I was talking with a guy who passively invests with a lot of operators and he's like, I won't invest with somebody until I can sit down with them face to face and get to know them. And if you're investing in a lot of different markets, that's going to be hard. It's going to be a flight that you have to take every single time. Whereas for him, he can just come to this one conference, meet a handful of operators, have those conversations, and then go back home and bam, wing, wing, bang, boom. He's he's met his operators and he's good to go. Yeah, and there's some really you know substantially large uh, national events where most of the big operators across the U.S. will be there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Joe Fairless's uh, best ever conference. I'm guessing that's what it's called. Yep, best, best ever, ever. best ever. Um, Jake like his Gino, would be a great one to just kind of meet a lot of the yeah the Jake and Gino group. These are good events for going to a place whether it's close to you or not to meet uh, people from all over the country. So if you are trying to get exposure to to multiple different markets, these are still really efficient ways to meet those operators. Uh, you might have to travel a little bit, uh, but everybody comes from all over the place to come to these things. So again, coming back to my point, it's the most efficient way uh, to really move your business forward, whether you're an operator or passive investor. Yeah. So with that, I would say actually we are putting together a list of conferences that we plan to attend in the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in maybe meeting us in person, in in the flesh, Mm -hmm. reach out and we'll share with you where we're planning on being, when and where, and maybe we can meet up and uh, grab a drink and you can pry open our loose tongues <laughs> to see if we can sink some ships yeah. and share some, some we'll dirty, dirty details of the industry on stage or way back in the corner. <laughs> it's one, one of those or the other, not in the middle. You won't find me in the front row. <laughs> That's not where I hang out. I'm either at the back of the room because I need, I need frequent bathroom breaks. And so I need quick access to that restroom. You do have a small bladder, tiny, like a peanut. All right, that's gonna do. It. That's gonna do it for us, guys. We appreciate you for joining us. Um, God, man, we've we're at like 130, 140 episodes. At that's this point. too many. It's too many episodes. But if you've been listening from the very beginning, if you've heard every single episode we've done, and you're still here and you haven't left a review yet, well, you're dead to me. Get out of here. Go. No, I'm just kidding. No, don't go anywhere. We appreciate you. But do us a favor. Go and leave a review. Go to uh, what is it? iTunes. That's where all the kids go these days. Everywhere. It's we're actually on Audible too. We're on Audible as well. Oh, and by the way, the Audible, uh, the audio book of Passive Investing Made Simple is coming out in just a couple of weeks. So if you're a person that has been sitting because you don't want to read with your eyeballs and you're waiting for me to to read the book to you with my voice, then because that's how that's how you read um, books out loud with your voice, mm-hmm. then you sure? stay tuned for that because that's going to be dropping any day. Uh, we're, we're really excited about that. So uh, that's it. That's all we got. Go, go home, guys. Get out of your that's car. It. Go to work. Uh, get off the treadmill. It's time to time to go tackle the day. We love you. See you soon.